Well, we're back at it again. I haven't really been doing much other than let the whole paint cure upside down. I just got it, uh, just finished flipping it over last week, but it's been so cold, record cold in Seattle, and snow on the ground that it hadn't been worthwhile to come out to the off or out to the barn here to work on this thing. But I got it up, and you can see the colors. And uh, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna hide some of the bleed through. I've got some changes I got to make. Uh, or not changes, but uh, some touch up on the uh, the finish uh, on the rail here. Uh, I should not have put this on when I did. I should have gone ahead and just put some masking tape to cover the area to protect the well the, the wood uh, from the paint. So when I did uh, pull off the masking tape, I could put on the gel magic and then attach the the trim. So don't put the trim on when I did. Wait till you get done with the painting. Yeah, because I got some uh, bleed through under the tape. The uh, uh, two-part epoxy primer and the LPU are kind of thin paints and so they'll tend to run, especially on the rough edge of the wood where the masking tape can't get a really good solid grip on, on the material that it's trying to protect. So, that being said, I've got uh, my uh, mask partner I got bolted in uh, and then the mask is tentatively in place. I haven't drilled a hole for the, uh, the cup that I use on the bottom to hold it. Uh, I will probably wait until I get the boat in the water to see the final attitude check on it. And then I will uh, drill the uh, pilot hole the, uh, where the, the base of mast goes in there. Next I'm going to uh, start putting on my hatches. I've got two smaller hatches on the air tanks on the side and then the big bow and stern hatches that I'll put in. Uh, but let me switch over uh, a setup here to uh, show you how I'm working on the rudder right now. I have a piece of three quarter inch stock to fit into the pintles that I got from Chop Down Duckworks. These are the medium size and I found a three quarter inch wide is, is heavy enough for the small boats that I'm building. 10, 8, 10, 10 or 8, 10, 12 uh, foot boats. If I was going to, uh, for, well even on a 14 foot boat, uh, three quarter would be heavy enough. But I'll stick in a board long enough and I've got, you can't really see it up here, but I've got a, a bit of a tiller in that I'll set my bottom clearance for the bottom of the tiller and I'll put a mark on this just scrap piece of wood and then I'll come up to make certain that I have at least you know an inch and a half to two inches above that mark. And then I'll come down and I'll mark the location of my pintle on both sides. Ah, get down here. This has already been done. And then I'll take my uh, rafting square and I'll come across the bottom keel line. Ah. Straight across and I'll mark that. And then that gives me a point, that horizontal mark right there, which will give, give me a vertical mark that'll line up to where I want the leading edge right in here. And uh, I have these marks on here, which then I'll take to my workbench and then transfer over to <laughs> where they're doing it. Let me come back once I find my rudder. Then I'll take the uh, measure the stick off and take it, like I said, take it on my, on my workbench. And I'll lay down a piece of cardboard along this leading edge and then mark off the location to where the, the top range of where the tiller head is going to be and then where the uh, grudgeons are, where the pen, actually where the pentels go, and then my line and then down. I've done a, a square foot in here and I'll round it off. Uh, I want at least a square foot of surface area uh, to steer this boat through. It doesn't have to be a, a knack of foil even though I'll probably make it a, a one. I've got to see how thick a, a 12 inch cord is going to be on my little program and that's something else I want to uh, do too and put on the internet but I'm having problems getting the, uh, the screen capture video off the screen capture part and into a program that I can edit and put it on but I think I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway so you may see one funky video come through that look okay on the screen but you won't see me it'll just be my voice over on the computer screen showing you how I draw up a, a knack of foil with the software I have. So now I'll just take this thing off and then uh, find some uh, 
plywood and build up a uh, at least three quarter inches through the throat here um, and then uh, it'll probably be an inch to inch and a quarter wide where the, the shape of the foil goes. So that's that for the moment and we'll go on to the hatches inside. I like to use a nice silicone sealant around the edge. I just wished I had a bigger, well not bigger, but newer, <laughs> newer tube. I had to cut the end way, way off. Squeeze like hell to get a, a ring out. So you want to kind of just put a, like a, a, a bead inside here and then I'll, now we'll go and stick it in the boat and put in some screws, but we won't push it in all the way. We'll let the uh, sealant fill the gap and harden up and then tomorrow or the next day I'll come back and tighten the screws up. One of the things too is I'll, I'll press it in tight and then give it a little wiggle left and right in order to uh, get it to seat. Now we need to get a stool out here to I went and bought a box of uh, just hatch screws only. They're uh, eight by five, eight, number eight by five, eight stainless. There's one. We've already got these located with our uh, centering drill bit. So I just need to put them in. I need to uh, charge my battery. Let me see. see if this one has more poop. I've had this little Milwaukee cordless screwdriver since 1988 and it's given me wonderful service except in the last few years I haven't been using it that much. And the batteries don't last that long. I need to get some new one but cheaper to go out and buy a new, new uh, let me do this off camera we'll come back when I get some more done. Okay I have them tightened down but not not tight just enough to hold them in place and firm to the to the, uh, to the surface of the uh, of the plywood. Uh, it should be perfectly straight uh, especially if you're using the screw on or the quarter turns. I had been using the quarter turns but I'm going to give these uh, flip out ones a, a try this time. The quarter turn ones are unless you put an extra block of wood on the on the cover like Chuck does in some of his, or in his photos he has on the, on the, for the hatches themselves uh, they're damn near impossible to, to open up. So I'll let that over, cure overnight and then I'll come back and tighten the screws down tomorrow after the, uh, the sealant is cured and hardened. And then I'll, uh, we should have a, an airtight seal here now. Okay, after you get it in place, it's probably best, uh, and I would recommend this, to have the uh, hatch in place so it will put pressure all the way around the outside ring so that it doesn't get distorted in case your screw holes aren't lined up and it's trying to distort the ring in any direction. So when you put these in, press them in hard all the way and then tighten down the screws and then come back and do a final torque out. These things are <coughs> tight. I don't know if any pressure inside will knock them out or not, but I'll tell you when you put them back in, you gotta. Found <laughs> got them back in again. But they come out. Not like those quarter turns that are impossible sometimes.